Hi guys, I'm Sarah and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a galaxy painting using acrylic paints. My goal for you guys is to be able to understand some of the basics of painting and how to use some skills for painting that you might not have known. So let's get started out by listing off some of the materials we're going to need. Okay, so some of the materials we're going to need are a canvas or watercolor paper, whichever you prefer. I'm using an 8x8 canvas. You can use bigger or smaller depending on what you prefer. Some newspaper, any old newspaper or whatever you want to set it on so you don't get paints all over the place. A palette to put your paints into. Some sponges, which you can have as many as you want because it might take a couple, depending. A big brush. Some old paintbrush that maybe you don't use anymore. Some paints water. Some of the paints you're going to need, I'm using acrylics, I'm using Liquitas, Liquitas, uh, Artist Loft paints, and Craftsmart. But the colors you're going to be needing are violet, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, titanium white, aqua or turquoise depending on what you prefer, black. Uh, you also will need a magenta color, but I couldn't find a magenta color when I was at Michael's getting all the paint. So I'm going to mix some plum and some cherry cobbler and see if I get the color that I want. So you're going to be needing a lot of black paint because this is going to be the entire background of your piece. Then you're going to squeeze the rest of your paints into the wells around it, except for the white paint because you're going to be doing something else with that later. So I'm not going to put this color into the well because it would be a little bit awkward to get in there. So the next step I'm going to be doing is I'm going to paint this entire canvas black, uh, including the sides because you don't want any weird blankness on your painting. And I'm going to be using a big brush with the biggest one that I have just any black. You can use Mars black or ivory black or just any normal black that you want and the goal is to make sure that there's no blank spaces or streakiness because you want full coverage. This may take a couple of layers and it takes kind of a long time to dry depending on how much paint you use and on how big your canvas is. So the foam that we use to videotape this decided to cut off the part of me actually painting the canvas, but I'm just going to show you what I basically did. I took a lot of black paint, I didn't use too much because you don't want to use too much or it'll kind of make the painting look weird, but I used strokes going right and I kept my strike my strokes going the same way all the way through the painting and I painted the sides like that. It may take more or less paint depending on your canvas size or what kind of brush you're using or just what kind of paint you're using. And then there were some kind of goopies of paint left over so I just smoothed those out going this way. So my canvas has completely dried now. It actually only took about like 10 minutes using this canvas and this paint. Last time I did one of these it actually took a lot longer because I used a different brand of paint and I put on more coats but I'm going to put on one more coat of the black paint so it gets all of these little streaks out if you can see them. Okay, so next, now that my painting has completely dried and the entire background is black and you don't see any streak spots or empty white spots and it's totally black, you can start with the actual colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this sponge. You can use any sponge that you want, like even just a cleaning sponge, any old sponge that you want. I'm just using these because this is what I could find. And I'm going to be taking some ultramarine blue, which is this dark blue right here, this one, 
and I'm gonna start in the upper right hand corner and dab it down to the lower left hand corner. I'm like dabbing it down like that and I'm going to kind of spread around the paint like this with the sponge and kind of fill in some of the space but leaving some of it black because you don't want the entire painting to be wood. So now that I have finished my coat of the ultramarine blue and it has completely dried, I'm going to do another coat of the same color of the ultramarine blue because as you can see, the paint after it has dried, you can't see it a whole lot on the black surface. So that's what the second coat is for. So now that I've done a couple coats of the ultramarine blue and gotten it to the color a quantity that I want, I'm going to go in with the cobalt blue, which is this lighter blue color, and I'm going to dab it through the painting and kind of spread it out but keep it kind of within the, the ultramarine blue and maybe do some on the outside but lightly. Okay, so now that I have the cobalt blue all dabbed on there and it's dried, I'm going to go in with the aqua color. You could also use turquoise if you would prefer. I just couldn't find it at the store that I went to. And I'm going to be using the same dabbing technique as I have been with this because it gives a good texture to the painting and you don't want to stroke it around because it just won't look right if you're trying to do a galaxy painting. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to kind of do the same thing starting up in the right hand corner and making it straight down to the left hand corner and kind of filling it in so it doesn't just look like a straight line. So some of what I did with the aquamarine color I didn't like, so instead of just leaving it there, you can fix your mistakes, and I went over some of the little splotches that I did around here in black because I decided that I didn't like them, and part of painting is trial and error. And next, what I did was I used, I decided that the magenta color that I used that I mixed earlier was too bright because I actually put it on the painting and it looked kind of awful. And that's okay because painting is a whole lot of trial and error. And so I mixed some of this plum color with a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I got the color that I wanted. And all I did with that was I kind of sponged it around here, kind of just put it where I wanted it. And this purple turned out to be kind of pink and you need violet and that was way too pink and it just looked weird so I kind of fixed that and that never happened so now that the actual base of the painting is pretty much done now I get to move on to the really fun part which is splatter paint how to do splatter paint 
And the first thing about splatter paint is that you can't have your paint be as thick as it usually is. And I'm using titanium white. And what you do is you put a little bit of the paint, you don't want a whole, a whole lot of it, but you put a little bit of the paint into a cup and I'm just kind of squeezing it in there. Like so. If you can see that. There's some in there. And you just want to put a very little bit of water into your cup. Very little bit. Like about that much. And then we can take it back in here. And this is where the old paint brush that you never really use comes in. And you just kind of mix that around and get it nice and dissolved in there. If it's too liquidy, then you can actually put more paint inside. Mine is actually a little bit too liquidy, but I didn't use quite enough paint. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more white in there. A little blob of paint in there. And mix that in there. Now, before you try doing splatter paint on your piece, you might want to test it out a couple times so you get the desired thickness and get exactly how you want it because you don't want it to get like a bunch of little weird globs of paint on your piece. So, once you have it to the desired thickness and wateryness, you can come to your painting and just use any old brush that you want. And you can kind of test it out on the paper. And with splatter paint, what you want to do is you take the paintbrush and you kind of tap it under the surface if you can see some of the paint coming off there. And you want to test it out and make sure that you have it how you want it. And make sure you put it somewhere where it's not going to make a big mess like I did the first time I did splatter paint, but it's really fun. And this is this is how you're gonna make the stars on the galaxy. And then this actually You don't wanna to do too many and you don't wanna to do too little. I got a little swooge there, so I'm kinda of just gonna fix that, that never happened. You don't want to put too many stars on there or it'll look a little cluttered and weird. And that's how I want to keep it. And that is how you make a galaxy painting using acrylic paint. I'm Sarah Wallace. Thank you for watching my demonstrative speech on how to make a galaxy painting using acrylic paint. Remember, Earth without art is just... Bye!